Hello everybody, it is Badger Wild and we are back with a Space Engineer ship review video. <clears throat> and today we are reviewing a pretty cool little ship that I found in the workshop. Great for an RP playthrough or just an awesome ship to try and start out with in your next survival game. If you want to run around and be a space trucker, this is the ship for you. And that ship is, after it loads up, the CF-179 Cephas by HDI created by Savers. So we're going to go over, we're going to give this thing a thumbs up because it is an awesome little ship. It is built as a cargo hauler basically, requires just about every DLC except the current one. Uh, Really good. Said it was this ship was designed as a response to the poor degrading equipment carried from Sol 3, formerly known as Earth, when the system was abandoned some decades prior. Heavier gravity bodies in the system have forced citizens to adapt both their technology and their biology to allow a smooth and comfortable life in their new home. Wonderful little ship. Now, as soon as you see this ship, you're going to immediately say, I've seen something like this in Star Citizen, and you'd be correct. The ship was designed to mimic and be like a ship built in Star Citizen, but in my opinion, it's got some really, really cool upgrades to it. It's got some awesome stuff, and this is just, this is the ship that you can just see some guy in a trucker hat driving through space with a Basset Hound yodeling in the side seat. <clears throat> Smoky and the Bandit style. But anyway, let's get started checking this thing out. So we've got this large forked area in the front of the ship, which is highly detailed. And when I say highly detailed, when you get close to this thing, you'll just be like, oh, wow, this is just amazing, man. How did this guy even... Some, some of these builds just make me think, how do people build something like this? Also, you will notice this trend uh, where certain systems are just in the open and exposed. This is something that goes with the theme of this vessel. And... Um, it enables not only for a very nice design to be utilized and a lot of greebling, but it also means you can easily get up close to whatever it is you're missing and you can load up on. It's got multiple cargo containers. Everything is connected to each other, <clears throat> so nothing to worry about there. But like I said, you got this large fork section of the ship, which takes up almost half of it. This is where the really cool clamp system is in place, and I'll show you that in just a moment. We've got two ore detectors on either side and an antenna, a nice little bridge primary main engine thrusters and I'm going to have to make something similar to this at some point in time because those are just awesome we also have these nice inset uh, what are these again? vent blocks that are in recessed inside of these small door frame areas so it's just an awesome idea going on there good use of the what is it? the beam blocks that we now have great use of those and we also have on the back here, we have an atmospheric miner for mining more ice and hydrogen, possibly any other materials you might want. This only works in atmosphere from the looks of it, and I, I don't want to disengage it just in case. I don't see a single hydrogen thruster on this thing at all. So you can see that. Going up here, you can see you've got a whole lot of options. And like I said, the, um, the area up in here is designed in such a way that when you hop into it, you can go outside the ship and start repairing things. So it's like an old, <clears throat> it's it's like a, a ship that you would see in probably Firefly or something to that effect, making it a very cool ship to just you know hop in, check out, run around, do all sorts of fun stuff in. Anyway, let's hop up over here and we're gonna go inside. First off, we're gonna start at the bottom of the ship as if you had landed this thing. And we're going to start from here, which is this underside tube. Now you will have to hop in here. This ship does not have an automatic scripts. And this is a pro this is why I would tell you probably want to get some automatic scripts because it is dang near impossible to get this stupid door closed. <laughs> this is one of all this ship and it can easily be solved with scripts. So once that is uh, shut, we will be able to head up here. And yeah, it's, it's very hard to hit this door and get it up. There needs to be like a button or something we need at some point in time, Keen. We do need some kind of button corridor. 
we can push a button and open a door or something. So starting up in here, you have your remote control block, your survival kit. You've got small storage here, a small couple containers or whatnot that you can store some things in. You also have your control blocks or programmable blocks. We've got one already in use and we've got one. Always nice to see this on a ship where someone thinks enough about the player that, you know, maybe there's a script you want to put on here on your ship that, you know, automates it or makes it a whole lot better or makes it follow you or something like that since before the AI blocks, which is what the ship appears to be made before AI came out. And it, this enables me to put in like door scripts or something, which is really needed. We're going to click on my personal lights here because this is a dark area of the ship. And just like this little area that we've come up in, you're going to have another one of these right here. And what this does is it is a nice little airlock. We can climb up this little ladder here. And here we are. We are inside the main body of the ship. So uh, before we go in, we're going to go back here to the very back of the ship so you can see where we're at. We're actually at the very end of it. You can see this is the landing pad we were at and the Atmo Miner, just at the very end. We got a couple of nice little chairs to lounge around in. Some nice, um, uh, what do we call these things again? Couches. Yes, couches. That's what they are. They're they're called couches. I've been out in space so long, I'm starting to forget Earth lingo. Anyway, we got some nice looking little grids on the back here in front of these older model beds. These are, there are better models out there that can provide even more. The, the new model beds, I just love them, but these are 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 still a nice change of pace. Players are still using these and making them work so well. Coming up in here, we have an area where our players can go in. You can take a shower right here. We have a bathroom. Nice CD amenities are being thought about. And we also have another two beds. So this has probably enough cargo seating for four. With the couch and everything, you probably ferry a player that has no ship or anything from point A to point B in a hyperspace jump. So you're making those jumps, you could do that. And you've got enough amenities here to take care of uh, anyone who wants to be involved. Going up over here, we have access to our storage. We've got two sets of storage right here. We've also got a timer up there. Nice little clock telling us what's going on. And we have on this each side of the ship a nice little airlock with two connectors enabling us to connect into another ship. Just, like I said, feature-packed little vessel right here. Opening up this door and going here, we have also a kitchen and bar, which enables us to fix whatever we want and clean off any ve space vegetables or anything like that and fix ourselves a nice little steak or microwave, a nice little TV dinner, whichever one we want. Got a couple of Clang sodas and some Clang coffee over here keep us going during the day. And a nice little seating area for three people if they want to, and an air vent, as well as another locking collar. Finally, ending up at the front of the ship, we have the bridge. It is pretty spartan, but still very detailed. We have one nice cargo locker here and a second gun rack over here. We have a primary helm, a secondary seat for God knows what else you want to put on there. Possibly you could use this for controlling a drone or something like that on the ship. And then you also have the primary pilot seat here. We're going to go up here to the helm first, though. And we're going to play around with the helm a little bit. Because this is where the ship really starts to shine, is in this nice, cool docking clamp system. Now, as you are piloting this ship, there is a camera that will enable you to target lock in onto the problem. But as you're on here working, you can click on some lights here. You can see what's going on. And at the same time, you can turn off the locking clamp system, or turn off the locks, and we set these forks right onto a piece of cargo in between the forks, push a button, and you see these nice little forks, these nice little arms come out from the forks and connect right up to the cargo that we're going to pick up. You can then press 7 and lock it into place. Fly it wherever you want to go. Press 7 again. Hit 5. And you can release this thing, whatever car you have, release it wherever it needs to be at and not have to worry about it. That is just a cool part of the ship. Now, what about speed? You're probably asking yourself, Badger, what what can I expect from the Cephas uh, in order to get it from point A to point B without running into pirates? What if pirates come in? Well, speed's pretty average. Okay, uh, it's averagely fast little ship. We're going to avoid that bad guy over there because this thing has no guns whatsoever. 
And you can see it's got a combination of ion and hydrogen thrusters, so it is more than capable. Mind you, if you look at the bottom of this ship, it has more than enough thrust to get itself and whatever cargo container you can put on the front of it off planet. It can easily get out of a planet's atmosphere and take any cargo where you want it to go. But as far as speed maneuverability, it is it's, it's about average. It's not meant to be the be-all, end-all of uh, space combat. But the one thing we can also notice here while we're just sitting here looking at this thing is we do have secondary set of landing gear which can be controlled by the helm. We also have over here targeting camera for your cargo if you want to get a hold of it and then at the same time you can watch that clamp swings around there and gets itself into position and you can just grab hold of whatever it is you're wanting to get and then release it if you want there's a risk of clang right here but eh, that's what you get when you want to have the really really nice stuff in space engineers and this is one of those ships that just proves itself to be a very very nice ship Anyway, folks, hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Cephas. Uh, it's an amazing little cargo ship here that if you guys want to go in and check out, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Also, thank you for making it this far in the video. If you could, drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Always love hearing from you guys. And don't forget, we are also on Rumble now, putting up videos over there as well. Some of the same stuff we got here. And as soon as I get the opportunity, I'm going to put something, some stuff up there that's going to be a little different. It's going to be, Rumble's going to be an area where I can experiment on with some ideas basically i can do some experimentation and throw some videos up there so you guys will have some really cool stuff to check out over at rumble uh, eventually also don't forget the subscribe star one dollar a month helps me out that's all i'm asking for from people it's just the little tip jar you guys can throw in it's kind of the way you guys can like i said it, it's just a tip jar you guys can throw money into to help out the channel uh, because hey, YouTube doesn't like the channel at all. Go figure. Okay, go figure. I don't know what I did to piss off YouTube, but they, they've they hit me before with some copyright strikes, and so I'm striking YouTube by not giving them a single goddamn dime. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, stay safe, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Badger Wild, signing out.